Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode four of QRS TV. I am your host, Lynn O'Sullivan, and today we're going to talk about ECG rhythm diagnosis. Now, this is the essence of performing an ECG. And if you recall, in past episodes, we talked about um, the layout of a multi lead ECG, which once again I have here for you. We talked about um, the normal deflections within a sinus heartbeat and what those represent. We talked about heart rate as well. So, we're going to layer on some extra concepts today to dive into how do we approach the ECG to ultimately arrive at our rhythm diagnosis. And I find that's often, again, an area that students and practitioners get um, a little bit hung up on, uh, on knowing, you know, where to start. So we're going to break it down into some really concrete steps. And the first step that we're going to talk about is coming back to heart rate again, because that sets the tone for am I dealing with a rhythm diagnosis that falls within sort of the normal heart rate category, or am I dealing with something um, that's making the heart rate go too, too slow or too fast? So I'm going to pick a heartbeat um, for this CAT ECG, and we see here that the paper speed's 25 millimeters per second. And so for our feline friend, I'm picking on this one complex that I've identified with an arrow, and I picked it because it lines up with one of those dark grid lines, and I'm going to use the 300 rule. So I'm going to count over um, to where my next heartbeat intersects the grid. And if you remember, if the next heartbeat intersected the grid at the next dark red line, or sorry, dark uh, line over, uh, the heart rate would have been 300. In this case, the next heartbeat occurs on the second dark grid line over. And so the heart rate is 150. Once again, that's just using that instantaneous heart rate rule, knowing um, the paper speed and what each little box represents in terms of time. So 150 beats per minute for our cat, that seems pretty normal for a cat in hospital. Um, and so that sort of sets the tone of what rhythms I might be dealing with. My next question that I'm gonna ask is, is the rhythm regular or irregular? And I wanna be clear that this isn't necessarily gonna answer you know, normality or not, because some normal rhythms can be regular. However, some normal rhythms can also be slightly irregular and vice versa. Some very abnormal rhythms are quite regular. Um, so again, this isn't answering normality. It's just trying to set the tone a little bit for what rhythm diagnoses I might have on my differential diagnosis list as I work my way through these questions. Um, so in this case, I think it's pretty easy to see that the rhythm is quite regular. So the distance between complexes looks pretty equal to me. If it were irregular, I would probably be following that up with trying to assess, do I think it's abruptly irregular? Um, or more phasically or gradually irregular, because that's, that's relevant to me in terms of differentials. So here we're saying it's regular and we're ready to move on. So the next question I'm going to ask myself is, is there a P wave for every QRS complex? So I'm going to identify the P waves here, those small um, deflections that initiate each heartbeat. And as I scan across from, from left to right, I do think that there is a P wave in front of every one of those QRS complexes. So that's a, a statement worth noting. My next question is, uh, Conversely, is there a QRS for every P wave? So now I'm focused on the QRS complexes. I've identified them there. And again, as I scan left to right across my ECG, I'm really focusing on lead two here, um, not really looking at the multiple lead for, um, uh, format above, um, but really we could be looking in any lead for the purpose of this exercise. Um, is there a QRS for every, every P? Yes, indeed there is. Moving on to the next question, do the P's all look the same? And by this, we sort of mean oh, roughly 95% the same because a little bit of variability is normal um, due to perhaps some artifact or some movement. Um, so I really wanna know, do they more or less look the same? And again, focusing on what those P waves are, I am prepared to say as I, as I glance across there that yeah, I think they all look pretty much the same. Do the QRS complexes all look the same? That's our next question. And once again, we're kind of applying that 95% rule. And I would say, yes, they all look relatively the same as each other. So that's important. Next question, is the PR interval constant? This is a really important one. So we're focusing on that relationship between the P wave, my first arrow, and the QRS complex, the second arrow. And the bar sort of denotes that relationship uh, between those two events. And really important because we are trying to make a statement about 
AV or atrioventricular association. Are those two events related? Once again, we're kind of applying the 95% rule because the PR intervals can change a little bit, but are they generally the same as I glance across here? Yes, I do think they are. It stands to reason to me that those P's are associated with those QRS complexes. They do bear a consistent relationship. And my last question is sort of about the nature of the way the P waves look. And really, I want to know, are they positive in lead two? Um, maybe more broadly, are they positive in the inferior leads? And we'll get there in subsequent episodes. Um, but are they positive in lead two? And here they are. And to me, that's important because if we think about where the sinoatrial node lives, which is in the dorsal right atrium, the P waves should have a positive morphology um, when interrogated from lead two's perspective. Um, and so to me, that's uh, sort of another um, bit of evidence that if my answer is yes to all the previous questions, that there's a good chance that I'm dealing with a sinus rhythm. So uh, we answered yes to all of those questions. We had a normal heart rate. And so I'm prepared to say that this rhythm is indeed a normal sinus rhythm. So let's review those questions again. Here they are. We want to know heart rate to set the tone. We want to know, is the rhythm regular or irregular? Again, to set the tone and to get our minds thinking about what differentials might be possible. Is there a P for every QRS? Is there a QRS for a P, every P? Do the Ps all look relatively the same? Do the QRSs all look relatively the same? Are the PR intervals constant? And are the Ps positive in lead two? If we answer yes to all that, chances are it's a normal sinus rhythm. And in subsequent episodes, we will get into scenarios where the answer is not all yes to these questions. And so what does that mean? What rhythm abnormalities can we identify by going through this exercise? So hopefully that sets you on a, on a path for rhythm diagnosis, and we'll see you again next time.